Hi, it's good to have you back and um, let's set the ball in motion with our first discussion. We're going to be looking at the security issue right about now. Uh, the United Nations body have blamed extreme violence and other forms of crimes in some African nations, including Nigeria, on proliferation of small arms and light weapons in the Sahel region. Uh, the UN bodies uh, noted that the transnational dimension of proliferation of arms and accompanying crimes were made easy by porous borders of countries around the Sahel region. Uh, do we see countries affected by arms proliferation adopting a strategic, a strategic plan for addressing illicit circulation of small arms and weapons? A fundamental question that we have Dr. Lionel Rollins, an assistant vice president, security and safety at the American University of Nigeria. Join us to provide answers to. A very good morning to you, Dr. Laune. Good, good morning and uh, Poco now. Yes. <laughs> Are you going down to the Vachama man yeah. again? Well, did you know that? Of course I oh, do. Oh, good yeah, she for does. you. She does understand Vachama <laughs> very well. Very good. We well, all are one. Why are you selling me out? I'm, I don't okay. understand Vachama. Uh, all right, sorry. I don't understand their greetings. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, a very good morning to you. Yes, yes. sir. To, to begin with, uh, there's no way we'll go straight into this discussion without talking about the 9-11. Today is another day where Americans and the world in general look at that event that they will never forget. You know, it's a dark day for America, and um, all Americans remember that day. Even the ones who were born after, it's been instilled in their minds and in, in their classrooms so that they will never forget, and we will never, we'll try to make sure it does not happen again because it was such a devastating effect. It was the, the, the most devastating attack on U.S. soil, actually. And as a result of that, um, we, we are very cautious about things. And we, that is why we have a resolve that to say, never again. We would never let it happen on our soil again. And I hope that the people here would, would adopt that same kind of thinking, just like the, the Israelis do. Never again. We won't ever let it happen again on U.S. soil. Well, after the incident, we've seen an increase in the activities of terrorist organizations across the world. Even Nigeria is uh, having its own fair share with the issue of Boko Haram. Now, do you think the world has, is doing uh, right in terms of really tackling the activities of terrorists globally? Well, yes and no. Um, you know, the world waited too long to react to terrorism when they all knew that it was there. But they, they, they thought it, would, it was something that would come and something that would go. And th that is one of the biggest misconceptions of the world. And now that it has become so deeply rooted in, 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 in the global affairs of, 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 of the countries, different countries, we find it difficult to get rid of it. And now that when one leaves, another one will just take over. Um, we, we used to talk about the Taliban, we talk about Al-Qaeda, now today is ISIS. And if, when you get rid of ISIS, next 10 years there'll be another group so it is here and it's here to stay uh, another disturbing phenomenon that is leading to the rise of these activities is uh, the issue of small and light weapon proliferation that is becoming a nightmare for developing countries like nigeria that is, uh, and uh, other african countries now what would you attribute uh, the rise to this arms proliferation to well whenever there is a growth in in militancy in insurgency in terrorism there's a growth in um, human trafficking, drug trafficking. There's growth in kidnapping. There's growth in, in banditry, herdsmen. Even in the South, there is every month, there's a new group emerging. So where do you think they, they get their firepower? There's a need for weapons. And when there's need for weapons go, when the, I should say when the demand for weapons um, grows, then there's somebody who wants to supply and meet those demands. And when they do that, they're getting very wealthy and very rich off of it. And you know, and it, I, I know sometimes people say it's foreigners who come and do it. No, foreigners did it a long time ago. But the, so they are uh, no longer the ones doing it now? No, Africans are smart. They, they found out the ways that the foreigners, the white man, was doing it, and now they're doing it themselves. So I know people they always want to blame the white man. Yes, maybe 20 years ago, they used to supply the weapons. The, the weapons today that are being supplied are being supplied by Africans. 